Michael Desiato is a wise judge from New Orleans who is famous for his high morals and principles. A widower, he is raising his son Adam alone. On the death anniversary of his mom, Adam takes her photo and flowers and drives to a tough neighborhood to mourn her. There, a group of suspicious men starts following him. Adam panics and has an asthma attack. While reaching for his inhaler, he accidentally runs over a teenager on a motorcycle. Adam wants to help the boy and calls 911 but can't speak because of his asthma. Unfortunately, it's too late and the boy is dead. Shocked, Adam leaves the crime scene and drives home. Michael finds out about what happened. He is devastated but still wants Adam to do the right thing and turn himself in. One detail changes everything. The dead teenager turns out to be Rocco, a son of the head of the most vicious crime family of New Orleans, Jimmy Baxter. Michael's instinct to protect his son makes him change his plan. Now, when Adam's life is at risk, Michael has to destroy all the evidence linking Adam to this car accident. He is doing what he has to do and comes back home to his son. Meanwhile, the Baxter family starts hunting their son's murderer on their own. The next day, Michael keeps covering the tracks of the accident. Now he has to get rid of the car. Michael asks his friend and Adam's godfather Charlie for a favor. This job falls to a 17 years old boy named Coffee from a local gang. Michael reports to detective Nancy Costello that Adam's car was stolen. Also, he creates an alibi for himself and for Adam as well. Coffee gets arrested for running a red light. Jimmy Baxter becomes obsessed with an idea to find Rocco's killer. His people find Adam's inhaler with Rocco's blood on it. The police find a part of Rocco's motorcycle in Adam's car. It proves that Rocco was hit by this car. Jimmy corrupts cops and they torture Coffee to get answers out of him. The boy is accused of stealing the car and killing Rocco. The gang leader tells Coffee to take the blame. Michael and Adam find out that an innocent man is going to be judged. They attend the court hearing where Coffee declares that he is guilty. Now he is in huge trouble. Michael decides to help the boy and asks his old friend Lee Delamere to become Coffee's lawyer. Adam is racked with guilt. Michael finds the way to erase all video recordings of their car at the gas station on the day of the accident. Coffee is going through hard times in jail. The Baxters manage to free their eldest son Carlo from prison to attend Rocco's funeral. At the ceremony, Gina Baxter is whispering something to her son. Lee wants to protect Coffee. He's been hunted by Baxter's family. Sooner or later, someone will kill him. Adam tells his secret to his secret lover, his teacher Franny. Carlo Baxter is transferred to Coffee's jail. He violently kills Coffee. Thanks to the Baxter's power, Carlo manages to get away with the murder. Jimmy realizes that Gina is completely sidetracked by the revenge. There is a conflict brewing between them. Michael and Lee start a romantic relationship. Together they tell Coffee's mother about his death. Lee wants to restore justice. Because of Franny, Adam gets in a fight at school. His grandmother, Michael's mother-in-law, Elizabeth, picks him up and takes him home. She doubts Michael and Adam's alibi. She knows for sure that they didn't visit Robin's grave from the day of the accident. Michael apologizes to her and gains her trust back. During the dinner with Elizabeth, Charlie, Nancy and Lee, Michael finds a bloody rag under the dresser. He immediately diverts everybody's attention from it. At night, Coffee's house explodes with his whole family inside. The only one who survived is his teenage brother Eugene. Coffee's gang, named Desire, wants to start a war with the Baxters. Jimmy discovers that Coffee didn't kill his son. Gina and Jimmy resume their search for Rocco's murderer. Michael starts receiving text messages from someone who blackmails him and Adam. This person has proof of Adam's guilt and wants $222,000. Michael loses control and panics. In a cafe, Adam meets Rocco's sister, Sophia Baxter. They quickly find common language and even flirt for a little bit. Jimmy deduces that his son was killed by Michael. He is planning to kill him. Jimmy even sneaks into Michael's house to look around. Adam spends the day with Fia. They get to know each other better. When she drives him home, they kiss. Jimmy, who's spying on the Desiato's house, sees them together. Carlo is out of jail. He offers the Desire gang a drug deal. Lee finds out about his involvement in Coffee's murder. Using Nancy, Michael finds his blackmailer. They meet, but Jimmy Baxter catches and threatens them. Michael says that Carlo is about to be put on trial for what he did to Coffee. Desiato promises to take care of it and make sure Carlo goes free. 
Jimmy keeps him alive and kills the blackmailer. While getting rid of the body, Michael remembers that today is his birthday. Carlo is being arrested by Nancy. Shocked, Fia runs to Adam and he supports her. Jimmy and Michael are at the edge. Both are desperate and lost. Michael keeps pretending to be Rocco's killer to cover Adam. The conflict between the boxers and the Desire gang sharpens up even more. Michael gets assigned Carlo's arraignment. In the court, everything goes wrong and Carlo's case goes to another judge. To retain control over the situation, Michael has to frame his old friend Sarah, who got the case instead of him. Lee arranges a secret birthday party for Desiato. Everyone says that Michael is such an honorable, honest and good person. But it looks like he has already betrayed all his morals and principles just to protect his son. Michael's working on Carlo's case again. In the courtroom, Desiato makes an impressive performance to convince a jury that obviously guilty Carlo doesn't deserve to answer for his crimes, while Carlo himself is acting like a complete jerk. When one of the jury members doesn't agree with him, Michael dismisses and replaces her. Adam breaks up with Franny. He gets into New York University. When Adam, Michael and Elizabeth celebrate this in the restaurant, Adam says that he probably wants to take a gap here. Probably he just wants to stay with Fia in New Orleans. Jimmy Baxter keeps threatening Michael to make haste with his next move. A new key witness shows up in the trial. It's Carlo's best friend Joey, a junkie who's tired of obeying the Baxters. Previously, Carlo told him that he had killed Coffee on purpose. While pretending to care about Joey's condition, Michael poisons his water. Joey passes out before he says anything significant in the courtroom. Nancy starts suspecting something. Franny sees Adam and Fia together and makes a scene. Adam asks his godfather Charlie for advice. Later, Charlie meets Franny in the bar and pressures her. Franny accidentally opens up Adam's secret about killing Rocco. Fia tells her parents that she loves Adam. Jimmy says that he wants to meet the boy in person, so Fia invites Adam to the Buxter's house. One way or another, all the secrets become clear. Nancy is checking for Michael's alibi and realizes that he was lying for the whole time. She confronts him and makes him confess. Lee eventually discovers the truth about Michael and Adam. Her heart is broken. She slaps Michael in the face and tells him that the only way for him to fix everything is to bring Carlo to justice and put him in jail. But Michael can't do it. Gina and Jimmy Baxter see Adam having an asthma attack and Jimmy deduces that it was him who killed Rocco. At the final trial session, Michael finds Carlo not guilty and lets him free. The Baxters are celebrating at the hotel and Fia asks Adam to join them. Jimmy calls Michael and tells him that he knows the truth. Michael runs to the hotel but can't get into the building. At the party, Fia offers Adam to travel together. They look really happy. Eugene, Coffee's little brother, sneaks inside. He wants to kill Carlo with a gun in revenge for Coffee. He misses and accidentally shoots Adam in the throat. Michael finally breaks into and runs to his son. He did everything to protect his child, but even everything wasn't enough. Adam dies in his crying father's hands.